do parents mature and attack you to the point where you never want to handle them again? I'm trying to keep him entertained. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parent Bliss Bomb. Please be sure to get your copy on Amazon so you have your handbook to help you know everything you need to provide a quality life for your little monster so that you can have quantities of bliss that hopefully doesn't include biting. Now, um, inspired by my friend Donna, I'm going to tell you that I have, I think it's 16 species of parrots. I'm going to have to count again. I have a list somewhere. But today's question is about, specifically someone actually asked about a kai. She was saying that you know she has cockatoos and a couple other species, cockatiels, uh, parakeets, and she was saying that she saw someone posting saying that, I don't know where they posted, saying that their little kai bit so bad that she's like never gonna hold them again. Um, and you know, she's heard that, that they get older and they just, uh, can really turn on you kind of thing. So is that true? First, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this particular monstrous species. Now, I lovingly return to refer to my Mac girls as Mac monsters. That's my macaws. My yellow naped Amazon as a Demogorgon. Uh, and uh, another friend of mine had a name for the kites. What they weren't the pterodactyls, some other monster. Because one thing about parrots is that they like to steal jewelry. If you want to steal from a jewelry store, these are the, the, the uh, little critters. You, I bet you could train them to go in and like fly in the store and fly by the display cases. Okay, seriously though. Um, the, you know, these are wild animals, and even though they're tame, they're not fully domestic animals the way a cat and a dog are domesticated. Not to say that a cat and a dog couldn't do their damage, too. So, sometimes I think it's easy for us to uh, stereotype and kind of think of a cat and a dog as a animal that's sweet and pleasant and would never bite us. Uh, but... If that were the case, we wouldn't have Caesar Milan, the uh, dog whisperer, and I've also seen some cat whisperer shows, which I, I thought were really cool. So, you know, keep in mind that 99%, maybe not quite that much, maybe 90% is really you, your energy, how you treat the animal, and then like one to 10% is the individual animal. Uh, and to, to try to uh, make that point a little more, I'm gonna tell you, my dad was a veterinarian and he was a bovine veterinarian, which means he was a cow doctor, but, um, and he was a professor actually, but um, he just had that animal kismet, that, that connection with the animals. And man, he picked this little guy up like it was nothing. Picked him up. Oh, I think he put him on his arm. And then Ketsi. This is Ketsi, my white belly kai monster. Ketsi just climbed up his arm and hung out like they had been best friends their whole lives. And I was just like, oh my God. It was, it was, you see this magic going on with certain people and animals. Then I had this friend of mine come over. Uh, he is a breeder. And right now, and this is July 2021, he has a baby uh, red-headed Amazon and a baby Harlequin. So if it's something you're serious, serious, serious about getting, he does ship. So you can contact me. You have to contact me and give me your phone number either, well, either on Facebook, um, Instagram, Messenger, or um, something like, oh, or you could send it on parablis.com and you know, just send a message. But anyway, um, my friend comes over and he's just picking up parrots like, like it's nothing, like, like the way you and I would confidently pick up a rose with no thorns. <laughs> and, oh, <laughs> he laughed with me. Was that funny? Am I funny, Ketsy? So a lot of it is you and 
your energy. If you have cockatoos, gosh, I would think you would really know how to handle a kite. Mind you, maybe you, you got really lucky and you have this incredible, um, gentle cockatoo that's just really easy on you. But generally speaking, we can totally say that cats and dogs, as far as the way we interact with them, it is different than the way that we interact with parrots because mm, I've heard of people whose cats jump on their shoulder and, you know, like my dog jumps on my lap, but not, not really, right? It's very different. Parrots, I feel like they relate at a different level. I think it has to do with the fact that, um, you know, it's funny. It's, they're social. They're so social, but dogs are too. Um, parrots, they clean each other. They they really take care of each other, but dogs do too. But like parrots just do it in a different way. So I, I feel like um, you have to really research your species for me, you have to make sure the lifestyle matches for you. You have to make sure, like one of my most important things are um, the food. Do, can I, like am I comfortable doing their kind of food? So for example, I think I'm gonna add species number 17 and get a barred parakeet or a lineolated, line, 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 lineolated parakeet. They call them linies, because that you can pronounce. And their scientific name is like Bobulus Murakotovic. That's scientific. I keep seeing it, and you know, those scientific names, to me, they're like, ah! But anyway, so one of the things I'm looking at for my mini is what's their diet like? Because, for example, a lorikeet, which I, I personally, I feel like lorikeets and um, coyotes are similar. I feel like they kind of have some of the same bouncy energy. But anyway, um, lorikeets, their diet is very fruit-based. It's liquid, and I'm going, I would have to, like, stop everything and do a different diet. In other words, when I'm making my fresh vegetables for everybody else, for all my other 16 species, it, I, it's the same fresh vegetables. Like, I don't have to worry. They all have the same basic requirements. For example, my African grays need more vitamin A, but I'm still delivering that. Like I, I'd like to make sure I get some broccoli in for some of that vitamin A. They all need beta carotene. So I can just kind of focus on one thing and deliver it. Whereas if I had um, the lorikeet parrot, I, I would just need to figure out what I'm gonna do differently because you know they're gonna have a totally a different diet and that drives me bananas. It's, it's a little too much for me. So. I like to stay constant and consistent so I can just like focus on what I'm delivering to my parrots. And behind me, by the way, you see I've got 10 parrotlets flying around in there. So they're, they're getting some fresh air, that kind of thing. So um, I feel like you really have to research. And what I want you to know about kayaks, and I, I ran this by a friend of mine who has five, and so like I kind of feel like she's an expert, but she, she has a rescue, and I have not had a rescue kike. Um, and I have never had this experience. My veterinarian, I've, I've had six kites all together. I only have four now. Uh, my avian veterinarian, who is like the queen of, she used to fly down 900 years ago. I shouldn't, not because she's old, but you know, because way back when we were allowed to import birds, um, she would get paid to go down and make sure the birds were healthy and that kind of thing. Like, and I mean, she just, she's been, I think she worked for societies in determining the level of endangerment to parrots. Like she knows parrots and she's like, yeah, if you don't handle a kaique, they'll get nasty. Now I gotta pause it. Yeah, I don't want you going over and uh, pissing off the African greys that are outside. In their, they're in a cage, but I don't want them to get his toes bitten. So, you know, my, my vet was like, you know, yes, if, if you don't handle these guys, they can get a little nasty, but you know, that's part of the course because there are, I think a lot of species um, like a budgie regar that aren't gonna necessarily get nasty, not friendly, and they might bite you. You're just a pooping machine today. Um, but for example, this guy, they're pooping machines. Um, but so what I wanna tell you that my friend agreed with is these guys, I've never had a problem with them, but, um, they want to do what they want to do. Right now, Ketsi, who is kind of my toughest cookie, 
He wants to go and bug my other birds. <laughs> and he just did. Come here. Now he's getting mad at me. You heard that screech. And he fake bit me. Like, he, he, he bit on me, but not, not enough to pierce my skin. Just enough to say, curse you, curse you. I said I want to go bug those birds. And I'm like, what else, man? You need to stay with me. So, um, pikes can really be uh, stubborn. They, they're like, they can be easygoing. And then, and I am giving you some of the worst case scenario I've experienced. Um, because my my other three aren't aren't so bad. And I, I do think of some of it's because he's male. Um, but they can be like. I'm going where I want to go, and you can't stop me. And they, uh, he he goes and bullies my yellow naped Amazon. When she, when, when my yellow naped Amazon sees my white bellied kaik, this one coming, she cowers, which is kind of funny because she is she doesn't cower. The she she's a little uncomfortable with the cape parrots because the cape parrots have these honking beaks, and. Beak size does affect their scarability factor. The bigger the beak, the scarier the bird. So the macaws, like all they have to do is show up. They can be sweet and they just show you their beak and like everybody else bows down. But thank good, goodness, Ketsy here, he saw the macaws and he was like, I'm big and I think I'll go this way. I'm like, oh, thank you goodness because you know it, the macaws could bite one of my fingers off if they wanted what are they gonna do to him I, like it freaks me out so uh, our macaws we do keep them separate we tend to put them out back so that they can fly around they get their fresh air and they're lucky out of all of my 16 species they are two species because they're two different species of macaws but they're back there and they're like well, we get the best place in the house I guess that's what happens when you have the biggest beak and you weigh the most. So um, this is a species that can be bossy. And for example, macaws are known for intimidating people, not other birds. Get back here. Okay. That's another good example. He just flew on top of the African gray cage again. And the African gray cage, I could stand in it. It's one of the, those big cages, but it doesn't matter. I don't want bloody toes. So stay with me. So they're very stubborn and they do um, think that they can outpower you kind of thing. If you um, believe them, <laughs> you're, you're, I, I can see them turning on you kind of thing. If you have a good bond with a parrot and you spend a lot of time with them, I don't feel like that's near as likely. Now, when a parrot gets hormonal, and that's when people feel like they, their parrot turned on them kind of thing, they do get more difficult. I mean, they're hormonal. I give up. I'm gonna keep my peripheral vision on them and um, so that I can wrap this up. And so when they're hormonal, that's a little different. I. I want you to know that I, I don't think I've heard anyone else say this. My observation is babies, are, of course, are not hormonal. Young parrots that are in their teen, the equivalent of human teenage years, so that they are um, they're not full-fledged adults or they're just after like sexual maturity, but it's like that process of coming into that sexual maturity. And the hormone time, just like a teenage human that's, you know, being driven wild and crazy by their hormones, you know, the parrots, I feel like, I feel like they're the same. And so during that period, they can be hard to handle. After that, my observation is they really mellow out. The um, parrots that I have that are adults, when they are hormonal, it's not that big of a deal. My yellow naped Amazon chose me. She doesn't want to be friends with our other Amazons. I'm her person. And so she, she just chooses me, but when she's hormonal, she doesn't bite me, she doesn't, no, 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 it's not an issue, there's. Okay, so my yellow naped Amazon 
isn't a problem for me. My other adult parrots aren't really a problem for me. I think that you need to be patient with your parrot when they're hormonal, just like you would be patient with um, your teenager and have some compassion to the fact that they're you know, being driven crazy kind of thing by their hormones. And you want to learn how to deal with that. But other than that, uh, if you're spending a lot of time and you have a good bond with your parent, I, I think it's just, like anything's possible. And each parent has their own individual personality. And man, those personalities make a really big difference. But generally speaking, I think you're going to be fine. And cockatoos, I don't know what kind of cockatoo this person may or may not have, they are infamous for being hormonal and very difficult. I believe that male cockatoos, the, is it the umbrellas, um, are the most rehomed. And the reason is they get into their hormones and they're exceedingly difficult. So if you were looking at a cockatoo, I would say, you know, you really, you, you would have to be on top of your game for training, for knowing how to deal with the hormonal parrot, that kind of thing. But if you're just looking at a poopy kaiik who has now pooped three times during this video, then if you spend time with them, I really think you're going to be fine. Katsy, um, you know, he's he's a young adult now. He should he's like over his bad hormones. With something in your nair and you sneeze, because I saw you try to get it out. Yes. Have you ever seen your your uh, Parrots do this, and they kind of put their their nail into their nair, and they scratch out. Actually, you know, and, and then they can sneeze. Uh, actually, that's one reason I really like to also give them a water dish instead of. For a while, I was using water bottles, and they were great. But I was like, you know what? Some things about this aren't working. And so when I give them a water dish, they can dunk their head, and they actually dunk and clean out their nairs, according to one of my uh, veterinarians. So um, back to. I don't think you're gonna have a problem. Just make sure that you are ready for the lifestyle of a parrot. So I don't think the question is, will the parrot turn on me and bite me so bad that I don't want to bond with them or I don't wanna have them kind of thing. I think the question is, is this a lifestyle for me of being with my parrot every day, spending hours? And I don't think you have to like on the clock, Start the clock, set a three hour timer for spending time with my parrot. It's not like that. And if you miss a day, it's fine. Going on vacations isn't as good, but it's a lifestyle where you are actively really spending time and being with your parrot and they are a companion. I do believe that this is not a pet. This is more of a companion. And maybe that's what it is. A cat and a dog can really be a pet. And it doesn't mean that you're not bonded with them and it doesn't mean you don't adore them. But a companion, you really spend your time with, you really share your life with, you sit there and you, you do step up and you let him have a tantrum. Come on, good step up, good step up. And you ladder him up. Oh, you wanna go on my shoulder? You can go on my shoulder, but don't eat my earring again. We have to figure out how to steal jewelry. If you gotta steal the big diamonds from a jewelry store. The perfect heist. There would be no fingerprints. So that's the real question is, is this the lifestyle for me? And then I think that that's going to help you. If you wind up with a parrot that totally doesn't work for you, it probably totally doesn't work for your parrot either. Then, you know, I, I don't think, people get divorced, you, you know. I don't think you're necessarily gonna be able to like forecast and get the right bird necessarily every time, right? I mean, you know, or maybe maybe you look at the right bird, but my point is in life, we make mistakes, we, we pick some things that aren't the right fit. So then sometimes we can make it the right fit, other times it just doesn't work. If you get a parrot that really is biting the, the, the Jesus out of you, then either you really need to learn how to deal with your parrot more or maybe you're really not a parrot person kind of thing, or maybe you really got a monster, like I lovingly call my Amazon Demogorgon, but I don't mean it. I mean, it's just because she's not nice with my daughter, that kind of thing, but I don't think that they're monsters in negative ways. 
I think of them as monsters in positive ways. They're big, they have big beaks, they can be stubborn, they can try to be intimidating. But if you're experiencing a monster that's intimidating you and that's making you scared to handle them, you know, that's something that you either need to address, well, you need to address one way or the other, right? All right, thank you so much for the question and thank you for joining me in this blissful video with Ketsi, my wife, Ellie Kaik. I will catch you in the next feathered video.